Ayana Janae, I am so excited you're here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for being part of an important conversation. Yes. You and I have connected online, and we're finally meeting in person. Yes. And I think we were kindred spirits right from the start. And part of that is not only are you a beautiful musician, you also are just a beautiful human. Thank you. And you're an entrepreneur. Absolutely. In the fashion world. Yes. Yes. I love it. And you do some film work. I do. I have done some film work as well. In addition to being full-on musician, full-time. All those things. And I would say the one thing that I was the most inspired by was your heart. Yeah. And your heart for knowing not only how to bring your gifts into the world, but you very specifically connect your story to the gifts and the art that you bring into the world, and that inspires me, but also how well you take care of yourself, mm -hmm. and that you know your self-worth, and that you have a positive mindset, and that you do the work that it takes to take care of your mental wellness. Yeah. And you know me, I'm very passionate about that and want to change the conversation, normalize the conversation mm -hmm. for entertainers like yourself and entrepreneurs to do the work it takes to be well in your soul. Absolutely. What was the quote from Tony Robbins? Success, Success without, without fulfillment is the ultimate, ultimate failure. Mm. So we want you to be wildly successful and fulfilled and peaceful. Thank you. So, and you're, you're living that, you're practicing that. And so, day, yeah. yeah, thank you for being part of the conversation. Can you talk just a little bit about, for you, why it's important to have this conversation and why it's important to talk about mental health, mental wellness in the entertainment and entrepreneurship industries? Absolutely. I believe in like mind, body, spirit connectivity. So because of that, I know that in order to obtain the true things that you want in life, you have to be connected on everything. So let's say you start out by just working out and making sure that your physical health is taken care of. Okay, now your mind is getting taken care of. Okay, now that you have a fresh mind and your head is clear, now you can do things differently and move differently intentionally at that point. So I think that in no matter what you do in life. I think all of that is important so that you can actually have that momentum con to continue to fight through any adversity, even your success, being able to maintain that as well. So that's why it's important to have these conversations of mental health because you want to do it to your fullest and your yeah. best ability. Sure. And have you, you always been that aware of that mind-body connection? It started very young. I, I didn't necessarily know what it was or was able to articulate what that was, but I knew that something clicked when I did start activating into those things. So when I got older, I was glad that I was able to find out right. what it was. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you touched on being prepared for adversity. Yeah. Yeah, because we, I think, are sometimes conditioned that if we're successful, we'll be happy. Right. And that's the ticket. That's yeah. the golden ticket, mm -hmm. is the dollar signs, the zeros in the bank account, the cars, the house, the title, the record deal. <laughs> but there are far too many people who are successful and miserable. Exactly. And we want to shift that. Absolutely, yeah. Because I think that's the lie. I think the, the idea that the success is going to come and then all of a sudden you're going to be happy and you're going to have the fulfillment that you've been seeking, that's not true. It's like you have to come with that. If you don't already possess that within yourself before you go into something bigger than you ever expected or ever was prepared for, you will lose yourself. And somebody will be able to come in and tell you what you can do, what you're not going to do, and you're not prepared for that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So being a full person and really having your spirituality together and being able to be like, no, you know what? I know what I'm going to do and what I can't do because morally that doesn't line up with who I am. So you can't say, like, you know, the ticket is the success. No, the ticket is being happy and fulfilled in, like, your spirit and how far you've come, like, your journey and your struggles. So, yeah, got to have all of that with you. Ayana, you have this just natural, happy energy and presence about you. It's like you have never been upset in a day in your life, uh, in your life. right? So that's, that's my question. It's like you talk about showing up and already knowing within you yeah. that you have that mental wellness, yeah. but can you talk to us about a time where you have struggled with, if you feel comfortable talking about a time you've struggled? Oh, um, <laughs> You know, 
are we talking about it in, in just in general, just when I've struggled in life? Yeah, especially okay. as being someone who has so many different things going on, yeah. from being an entertainer to being an entrepreneur, working in fashion. Like, talk to us about a time that you have struggled. Okay, I want to share this one specific time because it stands out so prominently because I was living in Chicago at the time and I was kind of transitioning. You know, I grew up here in Nashville, but I feel like Chicago really molded me as a young adult. So when I got to new, to Chicago, it was very interesting because I realized when I got there, I hadn't truly like mourned my mother's death. Like I realized that I got there and for four years, even though she had been gone that much time, like, I really haven't mourned my mother. Like, I found myself, like, self-sabotaging myself, like, not wanting mm -hmm. to go to class or finding somebody to give me some drink, you know what I'm saying? Getting yeah. a little alcohol and, you know, not really being able to be present or sober enough even to want to go to class or, like, care. Now, of course, I was getting through it, but I started to realize I had developed these bad habits because I wasn't sure that, like, I was even okay that I like getting to a place where I had known that my mother had been gone for four to five years at that point and then realizing like I never like sat down and really thought about me had not having my mom here. Because I was dealing with high school, because I was doing all of that, living with my cousins, like it was just a different time and like I felt like I was coping with it in my own way, but it didn't really hit me until I was away from my family. So I struggled with that and I hated that I was taking myself on this like spiraling effect of like wanting to smoke tobacco and wanting to drink and you know what I'm saying like and I even was still you know trying to pursue my career in musical theater you know and so when I finally decided to get it together like okay I'm done with this like I'm about to go out and like take care of business I started getting rejected and I was like not in musical theater, like this has been my escape, this has been my love, you know. Not only did I dive into musical theater when my mother was alive, because she would be like the seamstress for the show, she would create the costumes, she would also be in it. So I saw a woman that could multitask, a woman who had multiple talents. So I was like, you know what, like I'm gonna like really stick to this, because that's what I did in high school, that's, that was my escape. If I didn't feel like going home, I was like, I'm gonna be in a, another show. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do something else for myself to like keep myself up and inspired as an artist. So when I was connecting to musical theater, like I felt like that was my new escape route. And so when I was getting rejected in it, when I had been seeing so much love in it and seen so much success as a high school student and then having my first college experience in uh, musical theater, I was like, what is gonna happen now? Like, what do I do? Because this has been my focus, my primary source of creativity. And yes, I was still writing music, but I never called myself an artist in that capacity. I wasn't a singer, because most people didn't even think I could sing. So that was a part of my struggle, too, like feeling like I had talent and working on that talent, but having people around me be like, mm, mm, she's not who she thinks she is. Yeah. And me really seeing it, not only through my peers, but my teachers, you know. And so I really worked my butt off to getting like from having those it's no small parts, just small actors. That's what my auntie used to say. <laughs> From getting those parts that felt small to me because I wanted to be in the front forefront. I worked from being every different backup part, every different choral part, to finally getting those leading roles. And I was like, and then all of a sudden you start getting told no. And it's like, dang, like what's happening? Like, am I going backwards? Um, so I just really struggled and it was hard but then I, I did shift into music. And because of that, I knew I had to start taking care of my vocal health at that point. So all that drinking and like smoking tobacco, like, you know, I still slip up here and there, but that's my truth. You know what I'm saying? Like I created a bad habit and sometimes I fall back and that's human. But I've learned that my, my mental health on top of my vocal health, they, they need each other. So if I want to have longevity in something, I've become more intentional, like, all right, Ayana, like, get it together, girl, so we can have longevity in this. Because at some point, you're going to have to say no to your flesh and yes to your destiny. So, that's a time that I struggled. I was drinking. I was smoking tobacco. I wasn't proud of it, but that's how I was getting through. Um, but overcoming depression and being able to, like, really get through that part of my life made me fight for what I wanted. Because then I focused on music 
And then the voice told me yes. And I was like, oh, she's back. She's <laughs> back! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just been fighting to be a musician ever since. <laughs> well, so, I, yeah. I love that. And you actually answered part of the second question that you want to talk about. It's like, how, like, when you know that you're struggling, what do you do? And then who do you call to help you? And it sounds like that's within you. Mm. Like, it sounds like you, because you know what your vision is yeah. for yourself, is that is that accurate to say? You know, I've never thought about it like that, because I say I call on Jesus, because listen, I be being Jesus in the midst. Yes. With myself alone, I could not. I literally could not. And you know, it's always nice to have a friend or a confidant to really like be able to call and say, you know, this is what's going on. But I know that sometimes, when, even when we talk to our closest friends or you know, family members, they don't always have the thing that we need to hear. Now, sometimes they do, don't get it wrong. But I think that, like, I've learned to, like, find my solace and find my quiet space so that when I am confused and my mind is cluttered and I have a lot of negative energy, I'm like, okay, I'm going to seek after my higher spirit and, like, what's what's going to be brought back. Now, everybody that may not work for it, you know what I'm saying? But that's me and, like, definitely being able to pray and really show gratitude on top of being able to just say this is what I'm going through and I'm laying it all out on the table and I'm asking for a change because I'm willing to make the differences that I have to make in order to receive the blessing so yeah so you've talked about how important your spirituality is prayer and that is something that seems like that's probably the most important thing that you do to maintain just what I call stay vertical mm -hmm. and maintain your mental wellness. Are there any other, do you have like two or three tips that you do, like even just everyday practical things that you do to stay well? Absolutely. Mentally, physically, spiritually. Yeah. Um, I make a conscious effort to work out. Of course, I don't go every single day, but I definitely make sure that it's a part of my regimen because I know how I feel when I work out, especially like now that I'm getting up earlier, like I love having a day, like I love that. So I would say finding the times that work best for you, like even if you say you're not a morning person, I love to say that I'm not a morning person. But being up at seven o'clock in the morning and having like a full day to myself, I'm loving that. I can meditate, I can pray, I can, you know, be able to go and work out and have that time. I think also something I do is show gratitude. You know, I don't do it as often as I should, but there are moments where I find myself being like, there are people out here that cannot walk and cannot do the things that I can do that, you know, we be, take for granted so easily. Being able to put on clothes, that's something we do innately every day just because we got to get up and go, but there's somebody that physically cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So I show gratitude, especially when it comes to things like that. Um, something else that I do, man. What else do I do? You just have such a great perspective on life in general and on the way that I think it all comes back to just being happy yeah. and being fulfilled in general. But there's so many different things that you do. Like, I would, what could you tell other people that are trying to accomplish all of the different things that they're trying to accomplish yeah. on what if they don't have that spirituality and what if they don't have that, um, that vision yet, yeah. but they are talented and they're creative and they want, ultimately we all want to be happy, right? right? But like, what would you tell those people? Like, what's the first thing that you would recommend that they do to have a better quality of mental health? I think I would tell them to like write out the things that make them happy. And then once they see that on paper and really know what that is, even if it's just like fruit, something like that, like, okay, I'll get you some fruit then, baby. If you love fruit, you love plants, you don't have a single plant in your house, wow, that's crazy. Go get you some plants. I would say write it down so that when you see it written down, you can now see it in your mind. And like, okay, yeah. now for going back to the example, like if you did write down flowers and there are no flowers in your house, now that you see the word flowers, now you can visualize where those flowers can go in your house. Now you go out and get those flowers. And now you're looking up and you're like, that's one goal that's down, I did it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I say write it down, make it plain, show, it, show up for yourself and figure out what it is that makes you happy, what do you want. Ask yourself and even if you say you don't know, you don't know and you're fighting against it, the more that you ask yourself what you want, the more you'll find it, the more you'll attract it because you'll start being like, oh that is what I want. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know, sometimes we genuinely don't but I say the things we do know, make it intentional, write it down, 
and and find it into your life so that you can continue to like think about it and have it on your spirit. Um, I also think that taking risk, even when other people won't, even if that means if you need rest for yourself, but you know that you're working and you have to show the people around you if you're a leader, set the tone. It's like, yeah, we can be on tour together and we can do a lot of great things together, but if it's time to rest and I see that all of you all are exhausted to no end and y'all not playing the same and it's not the same energy on stage, what is the use of living and having the, the opportunity to do these things when we can't do it to our best ability? Mm -hmm. We're tired, we're exhausted. Take that time as leaders to like set the tone for the people around you that you are wanting to create these different worlds and different opportunities with and say, listen, when we need to rest, we're going to do it. We're not going to let somebody overwork us or underwork us either. You know what I'm saying? We have to just have that same understanding. Like if we need that time for ourselves, we need to take it. There's no point in moving faster than we can go. Mm -hmm. Like we already hustling and bustling enough. And in 2020, I think we should have all seen that, like, it is important to take time because we get to, like, see our family. We get to see our friends and we get to learn who we are because we grow in each and every day and each and every season. Something new is happening. And if you are a person that likes evolution, hopefully you evolve it within yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my two cents. <laughs> that's my two cents. So can I say, I would have to say one of my biggest challenges in the mental health field at former therapist, coach, is that helping someone shift mm. to know they're worthy to do all the things that we do, to, to go find the resources, to you know enhance whatever it is that they want, to write down on a piece of paper their desires, mm -hmm. that shift. But I listen to you and I think this girl knows her worth. She knows she is worthy of an abundant life. Mm -hmm. And that is, I know for Casey and I both, that's what we want for everybody. And we have to shift out of that, you know, that lie yeah. that success and fame is what's gonna do it. Right. It starts within you, you have that. Where did that come from? I just think it's by the grace of God, to be honest. Because it's, it's not something that like, I don't know if I was brought into the world with it. Maybe I did and like everything that's happened made me think that I wasn't. Because sometimes we have full circle moments. It's like, oh, that's always been there. You know, and I think that I'm just I'm glad that I can see what the negative does and how it doesn't help and how it pulls you down. Because being depressed is a real thing. Like it'll show you all the things that you can do and constantly remind you of that. But when you pull yourself out of something like depression and you overcome something like anxiety, something that can literally riddle your body to the point where you physically can't do anything. Because I used to have anxiety attacks so badly, and I think because of that, that's crazy. I think because of my anxiety attacks, I had to find my peace because I remember having to talk myself down so much when I was like my body was literally shaking and I felt like I couldn't breathe or like I swallowed something and now in my head it's stuck in my throat and maybe it's not even. It's just the sensation of me about to have a panic attack. And because of that, I truly had to figure out where my peace lied and so that if I ever found myself about to have an anxiety attack, I could pull myself back together even if nobody was around me. So like carrying that with me consistently throughout my life has been important. It's been a tool that I probably had to carry and created, not knowing for real, but now that we're in conversation, that's definitely probably where I got that from. I had to pull it you out. You had to me. learn to be proactive. Yeah. I love that you were talking about full circle moment and then you had one. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, I ain't got me doing. <laughs> I just, I think that's what it is. It's, it's one of those things where you, you do have those full, full circle moments, and you come back and you're like, I experienced this as a child, and then like had to gain something in order to get through it. So yeah, definitely. Wow, thanks y'all. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome.